hours near home, family, and best girl. Sergeant Bill Lawrence, Air Force, five air hours in from Bermuda. PFC James Hatch, infantry, 30 air hours ago, he was in Tripoli. Seaman First Class Dave Gardner, Navy, 43 air hours out of Tokyo, Japan. And Corporal Harold Davis, Army, nine air hours from San Antonio, Texas. Master Sergeant Robert White, Marines, 25 hours from Fairbanks, Alaska, and not by dog sled. All patients in St. Albans Naval Hospital, Long Island, New York. An unusual assortment, not today. In the hospitals of our armed forces, patients from such far-flung points are routine. As General Hall, responsible for the supervision of military air transport services air evacuation, put it recently, Modern concepts of military medicine have consistently kept pace with technological developments. The airplane enables us to bring the patient to the doctor. Thus, we can concentrate our medical specialists and their equipment in large hospital centers. Over two million patients have been transported by air since 1943. Experience shows that air evacuation saves lives and dollars and does wonders for morale. Throughout the world, as well as in the United States, the members of our armed forces carry out their paramount task of maintaining peace. So the Military Air Transport Service, in its important air evacuation mission, flies thousands of patients from points all over the globe. Sky ambulances on regular schedules speed them back to the States. There, from debarkation points and from all the bases within the United States, along MATS continental routes, patients are rushed to the hospitals of the armed forces in a matter of hours. All service personnel, no matter where they are stationed, can have the finest medical treatment in the best facilities and have it here in the States close to their family and friends. Scheduled service on any particular day may originate in dozens of spots. Corporal Jimmy Dorgan starts his trip from the 97th Army Hospital in Frankfurt, Germany. There he thinks of a girl and wonders, does she love me or does she not? When he learns that he'll soon be back in the States, he's ready to go right now. Greetings and salutations to the flight nurse. His complete medical record and those of every other patient will be sent along. Diet is an important part of medical care and the flight nurse lists individual needs. So that the chain of medical treatment will remain unbroken, notes are made of every special point. Having checked all the patients, the flight nurse orders the equipment and food and any special medicines which will be needed for the flight. Jimmy Dorgan blesses the air age as air evacuation loads its critical cargo. Critical cargo, people in pain, in need, and the armed forces meet that need with trained personnel and top flight equipment. Last aboard are the ambulatories, the walking sick. They move toward their seats and another flight is ready to take off. Right on schedule, the enormous transport is buttoned up and it's goodbye to Germany. Once in flight, specialized training really pays off. Behind every Air Force and Navy flight nurse, behind every Aero Med technician, stands the Air Force Created School of Aviation Medicine. The nurses lose no time in getting their charges on their prescribed medical schedules. The task may be simple, like giving sedatives, or more complex. In either case, each patient's en route record will be up to date upon arrival. 
Keeping up morale, too, is important. Listening sympathetically, understanding the interests which often lift the men above pain. Some patients brood over personal problems and solve. Others while away the hours with games as the transport cleaves through the skies. The nurses know the value of such therapy. Night comes and the patient's quiet. The troubled ones can often be soothed by merciful hands. Dorgan thinks of Susan, tries, she loves me not. Tries again, she loves me. And there is one other awake. Why don't you go to sleep? How can I, with those engines singing, home sweet home? Surely, swiftly, the great transport crosses the big pond. Then suddenly, through the night, a cry for help. Reaching the cockpit of our Westover-bound C-97. Looks like we're going to swing over to Stephenville, Gus. OK, our course will be uh, 335 degrees. We're approximately 500 miles from Stephenville. Takes about an hour and a half to get there. OK, bud, kick her over. 335. For all Matt's air evac operations, such emergencies are accepted as routine. There is no outpost too remote, no member of the armed forces too far away to be beyond the reach of the combined air rescue, air evac operation. As the general said, the airplane enables us to bring the patient to the doctor. This patient has had a rather severe fall, and you will uh, probably have to watch him very uh, closely en route back. Incidentally, do you have uh, oxygen aboard? Yes, Captain. We'll take good care of him. All right. He's all yours. Going home. Going all the way home. Next stop, America. In the gray dawn, the big transport lets down through the overcast, and suddenly the long runways of Westover Air Force Base can be seen. It's time to wake the patients, fasten seat and litter belts, time to break the news that will be on the ground in brief minutes. Touchdown. Made good time all the way. Military medicine and the air age working hand in hand. Everything operates with split-second precision. A flight surgeon goes aboard immediately and accepts the patients from the medical flight crew, which has guarded them on their trip. Unloading starts at once. Once again, men and machines unite against sickness and pain. That afternoon, or after a one-day rest, the patients are sent on their way. A burn case to Wright-Patterson Air Force Hospital, Dayton, Ohio, and home. Jimmy Dorgan to St. Albans Naval Hospital on Long Island, and Susan. Each to the hospital nearest his family where he can get the treatment he needs. Regular MATS flights, tying all the service hospitals into one vast efficient network, tying all service personnel to home, and the finest medical treatment the world can offer ready to expand quickly to meet any emergency such as that which arose when an aggressor struck in Korea.
Wounded American boys and their families knew that everything possible would be done to give them the best medical aid quickly. Battlefront to ambulance to plane, plane to plane. Giant aircraft in endless supply took over. And each boy knew when they put him aboard that thousands of Pacific miles had been compressed into a few days. Sure, swift, destination, USA. The hospitals were there, waiting, ready to serve. Army, Navy, Air Force. Within them, the specialists and their facilities. Weapons against wounds and disease, the means to cure, the sure excision of the operating table. Therapy of mind and matter. Final cure. Final cure. That day comes for Jimmy Dorgan. And every time he flips that coin, it comes up heads. She loves me. He knows. She told him so. And he asks the question they all ask. When? And when the answer comes, it comes the way he wants it. Today's the day. When that boy walks out the hospital door, it writes, mission accomplished for military air transports, air evacuation. Day in, day out, from strange lands across dividing seas, the fastest route to cure, family, home.